Now remember, Muslims have always claimed that our Bible has been corrupted. Muslims always claim that we cannot go back to the original text. Am I correct, Hatun? Yeah, for centuries, the time Islam stepped into the world, Muslims start making silly claims regarding about our scripture. But what we can see today is we have in British, li British Library, we've got one of the earliest complete New Testament. The Sinaiticus. And it's dated to 330 to 360 A.D. Approximately 325. As well as we've got 5,856 Greek manuscripts regarding the New say Testament. Say that again. How many did you say? 5,000? 5, 5,856 Greek manuscripts. These are the earliest manuscripts. Greek manuscripts of the New Testament. And that makes 2.6 million pages of the New 2. Testament. 2.6 million pages of the New Testament, just in the Greek language. Now remember, why is that important, Hatu? So New Testament is written in Greek language? It was originally written in Greek. So it's the earliest language that was used. Yes. We have 10,000 Latin Vulgates. We have 9,000 in other languages. But it's the Greek manuscripts that we're supporting today, because those are the earliest. And why must we go back to the earliest? We want to know what people write from the original language. And even though our earliest complete New Testament is from 325, we know earliest New Testament manuscripts, P52, is only 30 years later than it is written down. So within the first century, early moving into the, In second, the second century, century. we what? already have within 30 years, we have a manuscript that goes back just 30 years after it was written. Yes, we have P52, dated 125 AD, from the John Gospel chapter 18, and John Gospel is written down in 1980. Therefore, 35 years after it is written down, we've got the papyrus confirms what was in John chapter 18, verse 31 to 34. Okay. Now, these are the three oldest complete New Testament. You have the Vaticanus, which is in the Vatican in Rome. It's dated 300 to 325. You have the Sinaiticus, we'll say 325, possibly, maybe a little later. And then you have the Alexandrinus, which is from the 5th century. Folks, two of these are here in London alone. You can see them for yourself. They're right here in the British Library. The Vaticanus is in the Vatican in Rome. So these are open to the public. They have all been scrutinized. We don't hide a thing. All of them are, we've been transparent. We know the dates on this. There have been hundreds of doctors written on it. And yet Muslims have always said that we don't have that problem, that the Muslims don't have that problem. What problem is that they're pointing to? That these are not the original. Am I correct? Yes. They don't like this because these are not the original. Hold your fire. We're not ready for you yet. We'll get to questions later. But can you see, Hatu? they are demanding of the Bible which they are not supporting with the Quran. Because what do Muslims say about the Quran? What do every Muslim say about the Quran? For 1400 years, I heard, I am not that old, but like, since in my lifetime, I heard that Muslim makes a claim that the Quran is the eternal word of Allah. Was sent down to men called Muhammad in 610, finished in 632. So for 22 years. Today the Quran we are reading is Dot by dot, letter by, by letter, letter, sound by, by sound, sound, exactly the same what Muhammad received. Let's see if that's what they said. Let's look at these quotes. This is Susan Hanif. She wrote it, Islam and Muslims. What did Susan Hanif say? She said, the Holy Quran is the only divinely revealed scripture in the history of mankind, which has been preserved to the present time in its exact original form. That's Susan Hanif. Now, she was a convert to Islam. Maybe she doesn't know any better. Let's look and see what Fethullah Gulen says. Just, just a moment. Remember what she says. Preserved to the present time in exact form. The Quran I am reading today is supposed to be what Muhammad received. That is the 21st century claim by Muslims. Let's go to Fethullah Gulen. Fethullah Gulen is from Turkey. 
You know him because he tried to kick him out. They tried to kick him out. He's living in Pennsylvania right now in the United States. But he is very well known as a Muslim scholar. Let's see what he says. The Quran text is entirely reliable. It has not been altered, edited, or tampered with since it was revealed. All Muslims know only one Quran perfectly preserved in its original words since the Prophet's death when revelation ended. So this is going back to 632, he's saying. And from since 632, there is only one Quran exactly what Muhammad received. That's such a... Now let's go to Abdullah Yusuf Ali. If any of you don't know who Abdullah Yusuf Ali is, he is considered to be the best translation of the Quran in the English language. I have here. He wrote this his translation in the 1930s. Here. He is considered to be the, the scholar par excellence on the Quran. He is the one that all other, most of all the other translations have been based on. What does he say about his Quran? So well has it been preserved, both in memory and writing, that the Arabic text we have today is identical to the text as it was revealed to the prophet not even a single letter has yielded to corruption during the passage of the centuries not a single letter that's, a that's very big claim big comes claim. from a muslim let's see if they are going to able to back up what they are saying second one is Mavi muhammad ali not even a diacritical mark has been changed. That is the claim. Do you want to read it for us, Jay? The Quran is one, and no copy differing in even a diacritical point is met with. There are and always have been contending sects, but the same Quran is in the possession of one and all. A manuscript with the slightest variation in the text is unknown. <laughs> No, we're not saying this, and Muslims here are not saying it. These are well-known Muslims. Let's end with Shabir Ali. So you might think it is funny, but Muslims believe not even a dot of the Quran has been changed. What do we mean by dots? What are they talking about? What is the diacritical mark, Hatun? Uh, we will come to that one. Let's read the Shabir Ali one as well. Okay, here's Shabir Ali, Dr. Shabir Ali. He's a good friend of mine. I've debated him six different times. My last debate was in 2014. He will not debate me again. But he is the one that is saying this. We have a copy of the Quran dating from 790 in the British Museum. That's the 2165 Ma'il. That's the one we have here. We're just reading your own men. If you want to call them liars, that's up to you. Let's continue reading. Folks, that's 1,300 years ago. And we can compare that with what we're reading today and we find them to be exactly identical. Exactly identical. Shabir Ali, Dr. Shabir Ali, considered to be one of the foremost scholars in the Muslim world today, lives in Toronto, has debated hundreds of Christians, has always made this claim. He has a second claim. Let's look at the second claim. Because then he goes on and talks about another manuscript. But what is so important, he says, is to notice that throughout the ages of Muslim history, the Muslims have not quarreled over what the text of the Quran, because the text was known through memory work and through written materials. Did you hear that? Yeah. Written materials. Take that on board. Very important. Handed down right from the time of the Prophet. So there's a written text from the time of the Prophet. They're already calling me the one of them, as I said, the two copies that were made 1400 years ago, so he's going back another hundred years, one which is the Tashkent in Russia. Tashkent is not in Russia. That's fine. So he doesn't know his own geography. That's so who's lying here? Who's lying there you go. In his book, Ulum al Quran, to be early copy from that time. And we find no difference from that copy to what we're reading today. So what are you hearing here, folks? Unchanged. 
and Quran. Listen. What are you hearing? They're saying the Quran's never be, ever been changed. Okay, it's never been changed. The Quran we have today isn't the same all the way through the last 1400 years. No. So are you hearing that? No. Is that what they're saying? Yes. Has anything been changed in the last 1400 years? No. Nothing, according to them, right? Yes. According to them, not a word, not a letter, like not a diacritical mark has been changed. Like Mansur. That's a very big claim comes from the 21st century scholars. But the question is, in the seven, in the seven or eighth century, or even in the tenth century, did Muslims make the same claim or not? No, they didn't. Do you want to see what the early Muslims claim? Let's see if it parallels what the modern Muslims claim. So we have Sahih Bukhari who gives us what happened approximately 250 years early before 250 before he writes things down. Let's read what the Islamic tradition by itself by itself says. Okay, you want you want to start with Sahih Bukhari? No, we can start with the this. Let's one. start with Ibn Abi Dawud. We'll go in sequence. Muslim scholars are telling whole mankind, not only to the Muslims but everyone, that some verses of the Quran got lost. Many of the passages of the Quran that were sent down were known by those who died on the day of Yamama, but they were not known by those who survived them. Nor were they written down, nor had Abu Bakr, Umar, or Uthman, the third, first three caliphs, by that time collected the Quran, nor were they found with even one person after them. Now that's according to Abi Ibn, Ibn Abi Abi al Dawi. So you can see, this is a 9th century hadith compiler who is making this claim. Is that what the modern scholar said? No. 70 people died in the Battle of Yamama and they forgot the Quran. As they died, as they went to grave, they took the word of Allah with them and there was no one else knew what's supposed to be in it. Let's see what Asuyuti says. Asuyuti, it is reported from Ismail ibn Ibrahim, from Ayyub from Nafi, from Ibn Umar, who said, let none of you say, I have acquired the whole of the Quran. How does he know what all of it is when much of the Quran has disappeared? Oh. Son of the second caliph tells the mankind, do not say we have the perfect Quran because Quran got disappeared. Son of the second caliph tells that to the whole Muslim world. Quran got disappeared. Rather, let him say, I have acquired what has survived. Now, can you see? This is not the same of what modern scholars are saying today, or modern Muslims are saying today. What about a Sahih Muslim? This is the second most authority after Sahih Buhari. Let's see what he has to say. Go ahead. Some verses were forgotten. We used to recite a surah which resembled in the length and severity of surah two, surah nine. I have, however, forgotten it with the expectation with the expectation of this which I remember of. Surah nine is 129 verses. A Muslim is telling the people, I know the surah which was as long as surah nine. 129 verses, but I've forgotten. I can't remember now. People forgot the word I of the Allah. I got the Bible. Now, let's go to Al Buhari now. Let's see what Al Buhari says. We used to read a verse of the Quran revealed in the connection, but later the verse was cancelled. How do you cancel a verse if it's perfect? Come on, Jay. It was Allah who changed his mind and cancelled his own word. Okay, Al Buhari goes on and says, Allah sent Muhammad with the truth and revealed the holy book to him. And among what Allah revealed was the verse on Rajab. What's the verse on Rajab? That's the verse on stoning. Yes. Hey, hey, guys. Hey. 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 H
Oh, shut up! Peace! Peace! Yeah, go on! Peace! Oh, but I'm not going to do that. Yeah, go on! I'll say I'll be! Come on, flew over me! Speaker Corner Corner hasn't changed in two years since I've left. Welcome back to Speaker's Corner, folks. You need to walk away, you need to walk away. Okay, okay. Do you want to get banned? Okay, fine. Back off. Back off. Back off. Back off. Back off. Back off. That's not what this place is about, my friend. Okay? Folks, this is Speaker's Corner, not Puncher's Corner. Speaker's Corner, Speaker's not Puncher's Corner. We have a tradition here of 160 years where we only come here to speak. Please, no punching. Course, yeah. Let's stop this. Let's calm down. Calm down, calm down. Okay, let's continue on. Regarding you the same with the Bible, the no more and the Bible. They are both things. Okay, now we have some verses which are missing. Allah sent Muhammad with the truth revealed, the holy book to him. And among what Allah revealed was the verse on Rajam. We all repeat that. Now that's the verse on Stony, right? Yeah, and then also in the same chapter we've got the verse which talks about adult breastfeeding. We're getting, we're getting to that. Hold on to that. We did recite this verse and understood and memorized it of Allah's apostle. Allah's apostle did carry out the punishment of stoning and so did we after him. I am afraid that after a long time has passed, somebody will say, by Allah, we do not find the verse of Rajam. Don't worry about them. We do not find the verse of Rajam in Allah's book. What's going on here and why is this important? Because this is practiced in Muslim majority countries and Umar is expressing those verses is not in the Quran now. And I am afraid we are not going to practice this anymore because it is not in the Quran. So what verse are they talking about? It's chapter 24 verse 2. When you read chapter 24 verse 2 today, it is not stoning, it is now a hundred lashes for the adulterer. But it used to be stoning, and Muhammad used to stone. And this is Abu Bakr wondering what's, I mean, Umar wondering what's going to happen now, because he's going to, they stone, the Prophet stone, it's no longer in the Quran. Proof that it was changed between the first two, first two caliphs. Yeah, and also, this is practiced today in some of the Muslim majority countries, as it was in the Quran, according to the teachings of Islam. Okay, let's continue on. So that's Al-Bahari. Now we come back to Ibn Abi Dawud. Parts of the Quran were overlooked, he said. I see you have overlooked two verses and have not written them down. And he goes and says what they are. What does that tell you, Hatu? Muslims are complaining. We cannot find the end of the Surah 9, which is from verse 128 to verse 129 in the Quran. You have not put them in the Quran. Let me tell you what it is so that we can put it in the Quran. Only one person's testimony made it to the Quran. Some verses were changed according to Imam Malik. This was changed by Huf uh, not Hafsa. This was changed by Aisha, the favorite wife of Muhammad. So even a woman changes the Quran. And remember. Women are not intelligent enough, yet women are contributing into the word of Allah. And only the wife of Muhammad could do this. You can't do it, I can't do it, Sarah can't do it, but Aisha can. And this is the child wife of Muhammad, remember? Not she was seven years old when he married her, nine years old when he consummated, and he was 53. I don't know how that makes you people feel, but that is not relevant for today. Let's continue with modify. So here Ibn Malik Malik says, altogether Al-Hajjaj, who is Al-Hajjaj? He was the governor of Kufa under Abdul Malik there in Iraq. He modified it 11 modifications. How can a mere man modify it 11 times? Can you see what we're reading here, folks? Why is it we're reading? 
Then you have Sahih Bukhari saying, but Allah said, none of our revelations do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, but we substitute something better or similar. So here's even God saying he's going to change the Quran. <laughs> if he's going to send something similar, why he is like not sending something brand new, but something similar? There shouldn't be any changing. And also remember, Quran is identified as the eternal word of Allah. Allah, as the time goes on, changes and adopts his eternal word. There you That's go. That's not very wisdom. Is, is not that? much wisdom. Looks like God cannot make up his mind. But then Allah. we end. Allah cannot make up his mind. Then we end with this verse here. Right, narrated by Sunat Ibn Malad, Majah. It was narrated that Aisha said, the verse of stoning and of breastfeeding an adult ten times was revealed. And the paper was with me under my pillow. When the messenger of Allah died, we were preoccupied with his death. And a tame sheep came in and ate it. Now, I'll, as a woman, I'll let you explain that one. <laughs> I'm not going to try to explain that one. Oh, I to explain it. So in Islam, for men and women to be able to sit together who are not relative to one another, man needs to suck the breast of woman ten times. But Allah, because Allah shows mercy, and then Allah brought that down to five. Something happened. Soon after the death of Muhammad, the verses which was under the pillow of Aisha got eaten by sheep and today they are not in today's Quran. I think she gave it to the sheep. I think she intentionally had it eaten. She was tired of suckling, having men suckle her breasts. We know, we know she didn't like that. She was passing the men to her sister, but we don't know her heart. Those verses are eaten by sheep and they are not in the Quran today. Okay, folks, what have we just done now? Why did we do this? Remember, we started by looking at what modern scholars say, modern Muslim scholars say. And we looked at every one of them and what did they say? The Quran is perfectly preserved. It is exactly the same as that which was given to Muhammad, which exists in heaven. There is no word, there is no sentence, there is no verse, there is no surah, there is not even a dot that is different. Did you, did you know we went and quoted all that? But that is not what the 8th and 9th century scholars said. You know, so I'm not saying 7th century. These are actually 9th and 10th century scholars. We don't have anything from the 8th century, from any of these. It goes up to the 16th century. You're right. Now hold on a minute. Why is it that the 9th and 10th century scholars were quite ready to admit that much of the Quran had been changed, overlooked, manipulated, lost, eaten by sheep? But that's not what they're saying today. You have a question about this? It's a heretic. I want to go back to the to your original point. No, I don't said know. The Septuagint uh, in the Bible, the British Museum, the, the Septuagint is what I have in my hand here. It's available for anyone to read. Why do the Christians today not use it? Why do they accept the Masoretic version, which was produced 800 years later? Thank you. I, I, I accept the Septuagint. I agree with you on that. And I have the same question, but that's not Why the discussion is the today. King James Sir, that's not the discussion told, today. But people claim that the King James is at, unaltered, is a heretic, infallible Sir, word of God. I don't you don't believe that you claim. have to accept the Christian Bible doesn't make that claim. Culpable. Yeah, but they claim that the King James You can do that on your bladder there, and we will talk to you. But I do accept the Septuagint. We're agreed on that. We're agreed on that. So let's move on. We do acknowledge that Bible, which is the inspired word of God, written by 40 different people in 40 different locations. We don't say Bible is like the Quran, eternal word of Allah. We do not say dot by dot, letter by letter, sound by sound, the Bible is exactly the same what it was given to Jesus. Because there is nothing given to the Jesus. Jesus is the eternal word of God, gave himself to us. So, nobody believes, I hope no one here believes, that the Bible is eternal. Please don't say that. We do believe Lord Jesus Christ eternal, who gave himself for us. But is the Bible eternal? No. So that's the first claim, we, don't, we do not make that claim that the Muslims are claiming. Secondly, the Muslims claim that the Quran was sent down 
over a 22 year period to a man named Muhammad between 610 and 632. Would we say the Bible was sent down to anybody? No. Men wrote it using their own hands, using their own ability, put their names, many of them put their names to the books they wrote. Am I correct? But we do say the eternal word of Yahweh, Lord Jesus Christ, was sent down. Okay, so do you see what she's doing? Every one of these claims, there is a response, but it's not the Bible, it's Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is eternal. The Quran is not eternal, we're going to prove that today. Jesus was sent down. We're going to show that the Quran was not sent down. Now the Muslims claim that it was complete at the time of Uthman, 652. Would we say that the Bible was complete when it was first written down? And we would say yes, absolutely. On that point, we would claim. New Testament has completed in 1980, which is approximately 60 years after the death of Lord Jesus Christ. Bible cannot be completed at the lifetime of Jesus because Bible gives us, especially the New Testament, the life of Jesus, his life, his death, and how the church started. So we do not have the same criteria. We with don't the at all. When it comes to but that. I hope you're all listening as to why we do not make those claims. Now the Muslims say, and this is hugely important, that the Quran they have in their hands today is exactly the same. You've heard that already. We've been quoting their scholars. This book here is exactly the same. That's the Arabic part of it, as that which was sent down to Muhammad, that which was compiled by Uthman, that which exists on those eternal tablets that are in heaven according to chapter 85 verse 22. That's what every Muslim now says today. Every Muslim should be saying today. They are starting to change their tune now, aren't they, Hutton? And yeah. why are they starting to change their tune? Because first of all, they cannot find this perfect, unchanged Quran from the time of Muhammad. They cannot find unchanged and perfect Quran from the time of Abu Bakr, as well as they cannot find a perfect, unchanged Quran from the time of Uthman. Quran that existed that we have today. Hold I've on asked, to that. I've asked Muslims this question for ages. In about two I'm, hours, we're going to answer that. Okay, you got to stay here to two hours to get that answer. But before we do that, we need to say, what is it that Islam says? How did the Quran begin according to Islam? And to do that, you need to go to Al Buhari. You need to go to chapter, I mean, volume six. Hadith number 509 and 510. Have you all read it? Well, here it is right here. You can read it right now. It's in Arabic and it's also in English. Let's summarize what it says, okay? To help them out. Now, according to what Al-Buhari says. Now, before we start, when did Al-Buhari write this down? Anybody know the dates? He died in 870. 870. That's so he would have written it between 850 and 870, 20 years before he died. So that makes approximately 250 years after the death of Muhammad. 250 years. That's quite a long time. Actually, it's about 270 years, but that's fine. Now let's go no, back. If you write down 850. 850 to 870. Okay. Now let's go ahead and see what he says. In 509, he says that when Muhammad died, the Quran still had not been written down. It was not written in a codified form. There was no Quranic codex at all. We don't know why. why? That's a good question. Why did he not write it down? What was his one responsibility? To receive the Quran and have it written down, right? Muslims will say the reason he did not write it down is because he could not read and write. <laughs> he had scribe, not able to read and write. Zaid ibn Thabit was his secretary. What does Zaid ibn Thabit do? What does a secretary do? It writes down what the master says, right? Zaid ibn Thabit had 22 years to write it down. Why didn't he write it down? Come on, Muslims, you've got to come up with a response to this. Your other question is Masur. 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 He was a prophet for 20 years. He was a prophet, man of God for 20 
years and Allah trusted him and gave his word. He could learn of the right. What did he do? For whole 20 years, he couldn't be able to read, learn how to write down things. That well, says not only that. His how many letters are there in Arabic? 28. 28 letters. 28 letters. That's all it takes. Hold this minute. I'll show you. If you look at the letters, you will see there are not many of them. When you look at the letters, you will see. You can learn these letters. I learned them in two weeks. That's all it takes. And Muhammad could have learned in 22 years. There are only six letters that what we call letters that are unique, that don't need any dots. The other 22 letters need dots to know what the letters are. But that's 28 letters complete. Could he not learn these letters in certainly 22 years? He already knew Arabic. Can you see why we're asking these questions? Now, it was not written down during his lifetime. Abu Bakr then writes it down, according to Sahih Buhari. He writes it down between 850 and 870. I'm sorry, he writes it down in 632 to 634. It's like he writes down, people come to him and then urge him to write the word of Allah down. Otherwise, as people die in the battle of Yamama, they are losing the Quran. Let's write it down so that we don't lose, we don't lose the Quran. So here you have the first Quran written down. All right? We have the first Quran written down at the time of Abu Bakr between 632 and 634. Are you following that? That's the first recension. What happened to that Quran? So that Quran was passed to Umar, who was the second caliph. From Umar, it passed to the daughter of Umar, Hafsa. And Uthman takes place around 648 to 656. In 652, Muslim comes to Uthman and then says, No. Okay, now we're on Hadith number, volume 6, Hadith number 510. We're now in the next honey. We've now moved 20 years later. We're in 652, and Uthman is in power. He is the third caliph. What happens with Uthman? So people come to Uthman and then express that now there are differences in the Quran that they don't want Muslim nation to divide. So what do we do now? We need to make one perfect hold on, Quran. Hold on a minute. How can there be differences in the Quran if it's perfect? if it's guarded by God, if it's the final revelation. That's How could there be differences in the Quran? That's because miracle of Islam. Can you see? He could, Allah could not even preserve the Quran for 20 years. What kind of God can he preserve the Quran for 20 years? We're only 20 years later. We're only 20 years later and already there are corruptions in the Quran. There are many different Qurans. So Uthman now goes to Zayd ibn Thabit. You're right in front of the camera. Move over to the left. He goes right to of uh, Zayd ibn Thabit, who is the secretary of Muhammad, and he asks him to get Hafsa's text. And then what does he do? So they get the Hafsa's text by the same person who wrote the first Quran down for the Abu Bakr. They get the Quran, and then they go and search for it, and then they put together one and another. Hold on, before they, they do that, they, they ask the question. They did not copy from what it was written down. They put together one perfect Quran as a second Quran. And how do you know that it was different than the first one? All right, people are complaining about it, as well as Uthman says, if you disagree in anything, write in this dialect. Hold on, dialect. not in anything. If you disagree in a dialect, if you have a dialectic difference, you must write it in the Quraysh dialect. Now, who reads and writes Arabic here? Does anybody read and write Arabic? Come forward, please. I'd like to ask you a question. Okay, I'm going to ask you to see if you agree. In order to read a dialectic difference in the Arabic script, you need vowelization, don't you? You need the Dhamma, the Qasr, and the Fatah. Am I correct? Now, but, but in, in those times and times when the Quran was 
exactly. But today, when you see a dialectic difference between Jordan or Egypt or Morocco, how you read it depends on where you put the vowels, the U, the E, and the A sound. How do you change the dialects in the script? So maybe if you're using Egyptian uh, dialect, you will just use other words, just like Mish or uh, Mafahimsh or something. Use the word kitab. Book. If you say kitab or kutab, it's two different words, right? What has changed between kitab and kutab or kitaba? Yes, but, but you will. In, in any journal, you will find it just like uh, ka, ta, alif, ba. I know, but what has changed? You want to answer your question. What has changed? Uh, I, I, think, I think the vowelization is just... The vowels have changed. But, uh, no, now you... I think that, uh, that the vowels came in just to make sure... Were there that any vowels in the 7th century? I think no, I, I there think, were. No, uh, I, just, I just want to... I think that uh, you can perfectly... Um, recognize the text without vowels. It's just for being certain that everyone. This is an example for you. If you are able to record. See if you can dots, read that without any vowels. Without the dots, can you please read it? The problem is, you just add in the in the text. In Mus'haf, you just add vowels to be sure that everyone will read it in the same manner. So you have to add the vowels. No, no, you, you have, have to add, add the vowels. In, in another way around, you add vowels to be sure that everyone will read it in the same manner. You put the vowels there for everyone to be able to read exactly the same way. Okay? So. I just, want to, I, just want, no, I just want to finish. Uh, may I just say it again? Yeah. So, so as you know, uh, about uh, 1600. So it, it's about uh, like 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 1690. Uh, there is uh, Abdul Malik in power, and this is the first I would say who was really interested in arranging somehow an Islamic state, and he was really interested also in. Um, how do you say it in English? Uh, in giving it um, in, in, in order or giving it, um, how do say it, some uh, re regulations. This is the, the size 685 to 705. Yeah. Were there any vowels or diacritical marks at the time of Abdul Malik? Yes. No, there were. Yes, there were. Can you show me one the red, manuscript the red, that has vowels in it? The red dots. The, the red dots. Show me one manuscript from the time of Abdul Malik that had any vowels. No, the, 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 the red dots in the in the Sana manuscript. The Sana manuscript is 705. The Sana manuscript has no vowels. We will show you the Sana manuscript right now. Yeah. In here. I have the examples from That's late Sana right century. there. Just one minute. In here, I have the examples from the late 8th century. Those are the manuscripts. Can you show me the vowels on those manuscripts? Here's the Sana manuscript. Do you see any vowels there? Now the red dots. That's Sana. That's Sana. That's the, the original copy. Yeah. That's the original copy. But there are others. Can you able to show us the vowels? Sorry, the question is very simple. In here there are two examples. Are you able to show me the vowels on those manuscripts? Why do you need those vowels? You're not an Arab speaker. Ask any native Arab speakers if they need the vowels or the dots. Here's the problem. There were no dots in any of these. You, 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 don't have to, you don't have to ask an Arab speaker from now, any Arab speaker. The problem is, if you have one half is from this time. Uh, I want you to read it if you don't have it. Since there's no dots, I'm not, I'm no not dots. in half is. Why you said, why I'm not in half is. You read it then. Why do you need to be half is to read Arabic? No, if you... Where are the people who live in Arabic countries? Read and write in Arabic, they're not hafiz. Why do you need to be hafiz to just read the Arabic? I'm not, I'm not okay. asking I want to hear your answer. Go ahead. I would just, two, uh, two things. I'm coming from German. 
And if you if you ask any German now to read a German text from let's say 1500, he will not be able because this is. That's the question. I, I can read German. Nothing like 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 German. You yeah. have Germans. I'm sorry, you have German. You have consonants and vowels in the German script, right? Yeah. Arabic had no vowels in it when it was created. But the language has changed. And that's why most people are not aware of this problem. I understand that you're not talking about these scripts, but you can't read it. No Arab can read it. There's a, you're an Arab speaker. Can, look, are you an Arab speaker? Yes, yes. Can you read that? No way. You need to have the dots, right? Yes. So when were the dots introduced? They were due to introduce, all of them were introduced after Abdul Malik. Exactly like But, 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 yeah. but English, let's ask. You put dot on English and you want to read it as English, you can't make it. I just don't get it. No, no, don't worry about English. English that already has vowels in it. Like yeah. German, we yeah, already have the vowels there. You can't, read it. you can't compare German with Arabic. Like you can't compare English that's, with Arabic. That's, that's because the English hour. script has consonants and vowels in place. The Arabic script, when it was first written, in these manuscripts had no dots, had no vowels, and that's why they needed to put the dots in. That's why you have a problem with Ahluf and Kida. Now let's explain, let's explain Ahluf and Kida. Also for us to be able to read this manuscript, we need consonantal dots as well, not only the vowels. Uh, what was your question? So here we go. When were, when were the diacritical marks and when were the vowelizations introduced? Oh, well, we look at the 8th century manuscripts and we see it start processing. 9th century manuscripts, still it has been processing. So they were not canonized even in the 9th century. They were still being introduced. There was many disagreements. Right. The process going on. It's a process going on. Now here is what we're, this is where many Muslims get this confused. That's why we're going to go slow with this. For those Muslims who are watching and those who are listening, remember the diacritical marks did not exist in these earliest manuscripts. There are no dots in any of these. There are no dots in these. That's why, that's why dots needed to be introduced. They needed to be invented. If you just take one smiley face, you can put five different dots and they give you five different letters. Let me give you one dot example. above makes a na, two dots above makes a ta, three dots above makes a tha, one dot below makes a ba, two dots below makes a ya, na, ta, tha, ba, ya. It can be five different letters. But before those dots were there, nobody knew which letter it was. So when she says, we don't need the dots, she obviously cannot read Arabic. Because she, she could not read this Arabic when we asked her. Let me give another example. The word katala, which means kill in Arabic, it can be without dots. You can just change the place of the dots and then it can be elephant. It can be meat, it can be fight, or it can be killed. Kutila. Yeah, just one. One but those are vowelizations. Those are vowelizations. Yeah, but like from that, just those dots are changing the word from the fight to kill to elephant to meat. See how important it is? We're going to show you an example of this right now. Because both, this is why we need, you need a good. Let's go to the one where the katala and the kutila is. When you look at these dots, here you go. Uh, You look here. Here it says katala. Yeah. This and means this might be helpful for you. fought. When you change the vowels like it does in the words, it becomes kutila. That means killed. Now, were the prophets, did they fight or were the prophets killed? If I'm a prophet, I would rather fight than be killed, right? There's a huge difference depending on where you put the vowels. So when she says, we don't need the vowels, and you can read it any way you want, no, you cannot. That's why pokes, they have to have the diacritical marks. They had to invent the vowels. Otherwise, you can pre pre pretty much say anything you want for any verse. Because of that, folks, there were many different derivations, many different schools. How many schools do we know of? Let's just go back to the Quran of Uthman. Can I have the that's where we one stop. second, please? Uh, you want to go back again? So that's Before where we, we get into this, let's go back to... So, 
when Uthman was told to make one perfect Quran, people were calling one another kafir. It is because of the different recitation of the Quran. So those differences were very important, was making other Muslim to be non-Muslim, to be called non-Muslim. Therefore, Uthman asked Zayed bin Tabit to make one perfect Quran. From 650s, that one perfect Quran has been made, and whatever was written down before that, which is including the Quran of Hafsa, Hafsa were burned. It's right here, folks. You can see it right there. When they made this final copy, Zaidi bin Tabit, along with Alas, Zubair, and Hisham, so four of them were given the responsibility. Uthman then took all the other copies that disagree. Now remember, if they disagree, these are not diacritical differences. These are not vowelizations. There are no vowels. There are no dots in 652. That's why the Germans didn't understand this. She said it's the same in German. No, it's not the same in German. This is completely different in Arabic. So if they disagreed, that means they had to disagree in the Rosam, in the consonantal text. That means they completely disagreed. What did Uthman do with those that disagreed? He burned them! Why do you burn manuscripts? I guess Islam is the only ideology out there who burned their holy book. Versus Christians were burned and given to the lions because of their holy books. See the differences? They burned their own writings. Okay. Now, once they had burned all of the other manuscripts, they had one manuscript which is the final text. Yeah. This is the final canon. They copied that, made nine of them, and then those nine went to nine different cities with someone who memorized it very well. Here are the nine cities. Look at them. Basra, Baghdad, Damascus, Jerusalem, Cairo, Alexandria, Aden, Herat, and Nishapur. Did you count nine? There they all are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine cities had nine copies of the Quran. That was in 652. That's only 1,400 years ago. When you say, how do you know? You just read something. You tell me, who are you saying? Oh, here we go. We're quoting his own material, and he's asked, how do I know? We're quoting Al Buhari. Your own hadith compiler. I don't know, I wasn't there. But was Al Buhari there? Was Al Buhari there? When did Al Buhari die? In 70. When did this happen? 652. Do your own math. Was Muhammad even not there when that happened? Muhammad wasn't there when Uthman burned all the Qurans. Muhammad wasn't there when those Qurans have been sent to nine different cities because he was long dead. Okay, folks, that means they should have nine Qurans today. Am I correct? Nine perfect Qurans. Surah 1 to Surah 114. None, none, none. We want Muslims to show us those nine Qurans. Where are, Where are the nine Qurans? Where are they? Where? Where? You can have a Where? 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 Your question was, you want Muslims to show you? Don't you love that fashion? Don't you love that fashion? Let's give you the 1400 years. I'm not and he walks off. And he walks off. You see why he's upset? Because we're questioning everything he believes. Without the Quran being sacrosanct, without the Quran being perfect, if the Quran has any hint of human intervention, you then can no, no longer depend on the Quran from God. For the Muslim, it has to be the eternal Quran. For the Muslim, every dot, every letter, every word, every verse has to exactly be the same. But we're not saying anything that Al-Buhari hadn't already said. We're just reading Al-Buhari. So Islamic tradition makes Muslims to walk away from their own Quran. From their own Quran, from their own arguments. Now, so where are those nine Qurans? Muslims cannot find, come up with even one of them! There's no Quran from the 7th century! So what Qurans do they have? 
We're going to show you six, the six best Qurans they have. These are the six most authoritative Qurans. Let's go ahead and name them. Hatun, what's this one here? So first one is Topkapı Musab, which is based in Istanbul in Turkey. Okay, in the Topkapı Palace there in Istanbul. Yeah, in okay. Yeah, so when we look at this Quran, remember, we are asking one perfect Quran from Surah 1 to Surah 114, exactly the same what Muslims are reading today. And how much of the Quran is this? Is this complete? This is not complete Quran, let alone it has 2,270 variations. 290. 2,290. 2,290. Are you again? Okay, we'll go okay. with her. She's the woman. <laughs> She's my boss today. So we'll go 2,270. I stand corrected. You're right. It is 2,270. See how obedient I am? Don't you love it? Oh, so what, what are manuscript variants? Explain to them what a manuscript variant is. So when we, when we put the two texts together, if there is any written version of the word, do not match with one another, we would identify that as textual variations. Let me give you an example right here. We have the top copy right here with the Allah on the side. And when you look at Allah, you will see that it is a, 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 a version. Go ahead and keep talking while I bring it up. So, right here is the top copy. So here's an example of what we're talking about. You can see that Allah has been added at a later date. So this is Surah 66 verse 8. When we put this manuscript with the current Quran together, with this one together, we see Surah 66 verse 8 is different. The it has the word Allah in it, but the top copy Allah did not have the word Allah in it. It was inserted intentionally into the manuscript. At a later date. You can see it's in the margin. It's not as big as the other letters. It is much smaller, written in a different nib at a later time. Can you, are you following that? Why did they need the name Allah there? Because you don't need the name Allah in that verse. Let me give you some other examples. Here's another example. Here are, this is the, this is from the Codex, Umar, Fustat Umay Codex from the 8th century. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different places where Allah has been lighted at a later date. Did they forget the name of their God? So why did they have to put Allah in here? You don't need Allah in any of these verses. Because it's understood it's talking about God. Why did they put Allah at the top above it? You can see in a completely different name at a completely later time. Do you know the answer? Does our German friend know the answer? No. Can you repeat that again, please? No. He didn't hear you. He didn't hear you. Okay, she doesn't understand what we're trying to prove. What do the Muslims say about the Quran? Has it ever changed in 1400 years? Never. Every Muslim, we went through the scholars, we all read, you weren't here when we read them and quoted them. Every major Muslim scholar today says that the Quran we have in our hand is exactly the same that that which was written and compiled by Uthman in 652. Now this is from much, this is from the late 8th century. This is a hundred years later. It is not from the time of Uthman. In fact, none of these Qurans are from the time of Uthman. They are all from the 8th and 9th century. Uthman lived in the mid 7th century. Yet here they have added nine different Allahs, nine different cases where the name of Allah had to be added to the text. But you don't need to add it to the text. It would have been perfectly okay if they did not have the name Allah there. So why did they add it to the text? Do you want to know why? Does anybody want to know why? They added it to the text in every case so that it corresponds with the present Huff's text. The text we use today. The Huff's text has Allah in every one of these places. That's why they had to add Allah at a later date. Hold on a minute. So what is the Huff's text, you ask? We'll get to that. Let's continue on. 
So when we look at the top kapı musaf, which we were looking at, yeah. what we see is it has nothing to do with Islamic Prophet Muhammad. It has nothing to do with Uthman. Let alone it has nothing to do with the current Quran we are reading. Current Quran contains 114 chapters, 6,236 verses. Yet that Quran is not the top kapı Quran. We see there are 2,270 textual variations in the top kapı Quran. You know, she is right. I was wrong by 20. I give up. Okay, what about this one right here? This is the second most important one. Let, let me just give the date for the top kapı. Also, top kapı manuscripts are been dated approximately 70 years after the Uthman. And also what we see is certain I'm gonna, of... I'm going to challenge you on that. Uh -oh. Parts of the top copy, but also some of it comes from the second century AH, which means eight after century. 719, yeah. so well into the 8th century. So parts of the top copy, she is correct, are written between the beginning of the 8th century up until 720, but other parts of the top copy are written as possibly up to 850, even 870. So approximately five pages of this Quran is written by someone else. Someone else, yes. in a different hand. Yep. And who are the ones that did the research on this? They're from your country. Muslims. They are Muslims, but what are their names? <laughs> Dr. Tayyar al Tukulic and Ehsan Dr. Ekmelidin Ehsan So both Muslim scholars, considered to be the world's leading Muslim scholars today, they are the first ones to look at all of the six major manuscripts from 2002 to 2007. They took five years to research these manuscripts. They were given access to every one of these manuscripts. We are using their research. Let me repeat that. We're using their research to support, show you the problems with the Quran today. Let's continue on. So next one we have is the Samarkand. Samarkand right here. That's the Samarkand. It is sadly and sadly has nothing to do with Muhammad, has nothing to do with Uthman, and it has nothing to do with the current Quran we are reading. Remember, we are looking at simple Quran, 114 chapters, 6,236 verses from the time of Muhammad. Yet Samarkand has been actually dated 8th century. 8th century. Remember, Uthman supposedly finished the Quran in 652. That's mid 7th century. So we're talking 50, 60, 70 years later. But this only goes up to Surah 43. There's 114 surahs in the Quran. I don't want to be mean, Jay, but some of this Quran, part of this Quran has been carbon dated, and carbon dating goes 855. Oh dear. So mid 9th century. Much too late. What's more, of the 43 surahs that are there, how many surahs are complete? Only one. All of the others have missing. How many surahs don't even exist amongst the 43? Let me read it. Surah 1 is not that. Surah 8 is not that. 9 is not that. 10 is not that. 13 is not that. 21, 22, 23, 24 is not that. 25 is not that. 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35 is not there. That is 18 surahs are missing oh. of the 43 they claim are there. Oh. So why do they say this is complete? Can you see the Muslims have been lying to us all these years? Oh. All these years all these you years. need to make sure that you quote what the scholars are saying. Yeah. Do not listen to what the Muslims are saying. You need to go to scholarship. This is considered to be one of the greatest of the manuscripts. What does Alta Kulic say about the Arabic in this manuscript? I think he doesn't think person who wrote the Arabic well knew the Arabic. He says Men, whoever wrote this Quran did not know their Arabic very well. Wow. There are grammatical mistakes. There is lazy writing written by about five different scribes. He says don't even use it. Don't even use it, he says. It says undiscipled spelling, scribal mistakes, copyright mistakes written by amateurs. Written by amateurs, like you and me. Now let's go to the third one. For sure it wasn't me who wrote it down, Jay. Okay, now this is the one that's here in the British Library. 
This is the one we have right down the street. This is the Ma'il Quran, known as the 2165 manuscript. It's called Ma'il because it's slanted. Ma'il means slanted in Arabic. So this concerned many Muslim belief that this was the greatest manuscript. It only goes up to Surah 43. It only contains 53% of the Quran, but it does contain more than the Samarkand. So that's at least one thing in a favor. What kind of script is it? Ma'il, that's Hijazi. And what do we know about the Hijazi? Um, just before that, I want to make sure that we all understand this Quran has nothing to do with Muhammad. This Quran has nothing to do with Uthman. So this is not the Quran. I am looking to be the exactly the same with 114 chapters of the Quran. This only goes up to Surah 43. Yeah. Now, can you see? I'm sorry, I meant 53. Let's go continue on. What was the date for this Quran? Because there's a huge dispute concerning the date. Um, I think you need to remind me that. When Martin Lynx, who was responsible for all the manuscript, who is a Muslim, convert to Islam, has been responsible for the manuscript for many, many years, when he dated this manuscript, he dated it to 790, late 8th century. When Baker, the current curator for the manuscripts, when he was came, became curator, he put it down to 690. Someone telephoned him, and after 10 minutes of talking to him, asking him how did he come to 690, they said, would you mind if we brought down a reporter to interview you? But then who is Colin Baker, and what is his expertise? He is a medical scientist. He only studies medical works. He doesn't study Quran. He doesn't even know Arabic. Why so he... how is he dating it to the seventh century? Now, That's Islamic awareness and the Dawah team have quoted him. But they don't realize that he didn't even know what he was talking about. Martin Lynx. Martin Lynx knows much more what he's talking about. But can you see what we're dealing with? We are finding folk scientists who are dating these Qurans. You need to go to the Arabists, those who know, who are using paleographical studies to understand how to date it. Now, what about this one over here? So that is the Paris manuscripts. It has lots of on it. And it has nothing to do again with Muhammad, with Uthman. It has nothing to do with Muhammad, with Uthman, and it has nothing to do with the current Quran we are reading today. What we are looking is 114 chapters, 6,236 verses, exactly the same what we are reading, and Paris is not answer to that question. The, there are actually three or four Paris manuscripts, are there not? Yeah, 328, 300... 328A, 328C, these are actually different pieces. Some of them, one of them is 16% of the Quran. The other one is 22% of the Quran. So neither of these are complete. Am I correct? None of them are complete. Do they have manuscript variants? They do contain manuscript variations as well as not the full Quran. Not the full Quran. In fact, when we look at the three, two, the Arab three, uh, the Dom, uh, sorry, three, BNF 328A, it goes, it has over 93 Arab, uh, has 93 manuscript variants in just the 22% that it contains. Now these are words or phrases that are different than the Quran today from these manuscripts, proving that someone changed them along the way, that there has been correction along the way. Let me, let me just tell you in summary what we have. We have Arabi 321, which is only 87% of the Quran, sorry, 87 folios. We have Araba 330 G, it is only 43 folios. Araba 326, only 18, 18 folios. <laughs> so none of them gives us the one perfect Quran which Muslims have been claiming to. Now, Islamic Awareness website and Dawah team here believe that this is a 7th century manuscript. I'm sorry, a 7th century manuscript. They believe that this one is a 7th century manuscript. They believe that these four that we have shown you are all written before 719, within the first century of Islam AH. We're going to get to that question. Well, let's go at two more manuscripts that I find this one especially is the most exciting. 
This is the Husseini manuscript. The Husseini manuscript is found in Egypt, in Cairo. And some people call it the Cairo manuscript as well. Yeah. Does it have, is it the full manuscript? Is it the full Quran? No, it's not full Quran. It's only 1087 folios. It's not the full Quran and it is dated in 2nd century Hijra, which is 8th century. Possibly some say even 9th century. Doro said 9th century. What about this Quran here? Because this one is the most exciting. This was discovered in 1975 in Yemen, in Sana, in the Sana Mosque. When they were clearing it out, it, they fell to the ground. And when they looked at it, unlike the German lady over here, they could not read it. Even though she said you can read it quite easily. Nobody in Yemen could read it because it had no diacritical marks and it had no vowels. So who did they have to fly down to read this manuscript? German guys. The Germans. And who were they? Gerd Prin, Dr. Von Bothmer, and Dr. Oli. The three most authoritative authorities on the early Arabic script. They are from Saarland University in Saarbrück in Western Germany. They were flown down in 1981 to look at this manuscript. They immediately realized that this manuscript was very early because it had no diacritical marks, it had no vowelization. They quickly took pictures of every one of the pages. They put them on the microfilm. The Yemeni government started hearing what they were saying and they quickly confiscated their microfilms. This is what you do when you don't like what you hear. You either burn manuscripts or you confiscate manuscripts, are you right? Burning and confiscating. It's gonna get better, hold on. So here, they confiscated their manuscripts until 1997 when they finally released the microfilms to them. This is a picture of one of those pages. Take a look here. You can see Surah 19. Where that yellow mark is, it jumps to Surah 22. What happened to Surah 20 and 21? It appears on this side. Can you see it's a completely different script? A completely different text. This is about 60 years after this one. There's 60 years between these two pages. That is Hijazi on this side. This is a later Kufic script or a later what they some call a Western Hijazi. Now what's fascinating when you look at this, you can see that this is a Evola evolving text. Are you following that? an evolving text. But that's not all that they found. When they looked at it carefully, they noticed that parts of it had a lower script on it. Can you see? There are two different scripts there. Somebody wrote on this to begin with in Arabic, and then they washed it off and wrote over top. They wrote it the Quranic verses in Arabic, they washed it and then they rewrite the Quranic verses. It's not any writing, it is the Quranic verses. And today, we are able to read what was the underwriting. Now, when you wash up, remember, these are all written on animal skins. Because they're so durable, you can wash it off. And when you wash it off, it looks like there's nothing left, right? So that's why they wrote over top. What they didn't realize is that after 1300 years, that ink starts to bleed through. And so when you put it under ultraviolet light, you can see the lower text. Now the lower text has now been distinguished and has now been pulled aside, sorry, that's not the right word, has been extricated from the upper text. Asma Hilali wrote a book in 2017. So two years ago, September 2017, she has now shown the entire lower text. And what do we now know about that lower text? So there are 63 verses on the writing, and there are 70 variations within the 63 verses. And what kind of variations are there? There are verbal differences. 25 times it has different nouns, articles, participles, and conjunctions. There are prepositions, isolated letters, 29 times, and expressions that are different between the lower text and the Quran we have today. Entire sentences, 16 times, entire sentences are included in the lower text than what we have in the Quran today. Some overlap within the verses. So how do you deal with that? How did Asma Hilali deal with it? 
Remember, Asma Halali is a Muslim. How did she answer that? They were probably written by amateurs, our students. This is a school text, you call it. A school text means it's written by a student who didn't know any better. Now, what's the problem with that? You trust the eternal word of Allah, which is supposed to affect the eternity of people to a student. Why would you allow a student to write on parchment? This is animal skin. This is the most expensive form of writing. Remember, the early church did not have parchment. The early church, all the Bibles were written on papyrus until the 325, until Constantine, who was the emperor, became a Christian, made it the national religion. He, therefore, commissioned 50 of these codices. made it legal for you to be Christian. Okay, can you see? He was the one that commissioned codices for the Council of Nicaea. So you don't have, even the early church didn't have man manuscripts like that. And they would be prohibitively expensive to write on animal skin. Just the Sinaiticus alone, the New Testament, Sinaiticus, you have to have 62 different deer, deer skins to make that one codex. Who could have and who could make that unless you were wealthy? So can you see, why would they give this to students? Secondly, secondly, why is it a student's text is the oldest Quran in history? We don't have anything older, and it belongs to a student. <laughs> Thirdly, why did they then write over top? Now the upper sec, the upper part of the Quran, this upper text, is dated to 705 and later. The lower text is possibly dated to 680 and later. But whatever the case is, you can see there are two completely different Qur'ans.